Then to do <laughs> what? What happened? No, it's yeah. Funny. Yeah. Well, everyone, this is actually our meeting. We have four trustees tonight. Um, everyone else uh, can, could, uh, well, uh, Tamara, we knew. Everyone else can't make it. So since everyone's here, Eric is here, yep. Um, so I have 702. So I will call the meeting to order. Uh, let's do roll call. Okay. Gonzalez? No. Mesa Jack? Here. Monzone? Here. Pelletier here. Puzo? Here. Swanson is not. Jost? No. So we have four trustees tonight. So that is a quorum. So we have enough for our meeting. Um, Pam and I were uh, kind of going back and forth. We're like, well, if one more person drops out, <laughs> then, you know, no meeting. So, um, so thanks for those of you who could be here. So, um, all right. So first thing we have is the approval of the minutes for the regular board meeting, uh, July 9th, 2020. So before you were on, Emily, it occurred to me just a few minutes ago that I hadn't actually sent those to the board. Mm -hmm. So I did just send an email with them uh, um, with the June, the July 9th uh, minutes. If you have a chance, if you want to look them over now, or we can choose to table it till the September meeting if you want. I, I looked them over. That's probably why I joined last. I have yeah. two corrections. The financial report and the policies that we voted on were all approved by vo uh, roll call, not voice vote. Very minor correction. The policies and what else, Joanne? Financial report. Okay, yeah. Okay, we'll make those corrections and then um, we can, I can submit them again for next month's board meeting then if that's okay. Okay, sure. that's fine. And my apologies, so. No worries. It's it's hard to. Um, I'm just looking them over, kind of as as we're as as uh, as we're talking. But no, I it it it's it's hard to this whole thing, you know, communicating everything versus you know via email. So, um, all right. So no vote is needed. So then, um, so, so that's table we'll till table that till September. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay. Uh, public comments, agenda items only. Um, we have some staff people here, but I did not receive any comments from the public and it does not look like there's any public attending. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, president's report. Um, only thing I have, and I'm glad you're here, Melissa, but I just wanted to, um, welcome you onto your new role. So, um, thanks for, um, filling in and, um, I know that you'll be, uh, great in the role. So, um, hope the transition is good with this overall weird time. So, um, so just wanted to give you a little shout out there. So, um, okay. Uh, committee reports, uh, finance. So, uh, well, Carlotta's not here. Um, she has been coming in to sign the checks for the past couple of weeks. So okay. she's been looking things over, um, as well. So, yeah. um, I think we started so is it two or three weeks ago so um so if there's any questions about anything i can i'll be happy to answer them but carlotta has been reviewing them on a weekly basis now for the past okay. few weeks all right well i'll just walk everybody through i'll help you I'll, I'll be official i'll make a motion to approve the july uh 2020 financial reports I'll second. Second. thank you okay um so we can just kind of go through everything. Any questions on the cash statement? Keep in mind a little bit further down in the agenda, we do have um, a resolution for um, transferring of funds. So um, the income statement. Uh, check register. Any questions with anything? Seemed like a pretty um, standard kind of month. Yeah. You may report. Questions, comments? No. Nope. 
we can approve that. Okay, let's vote. All right, uh, Mesa Jack? Yes. Monzone? Yes. Pelletier, yes. Puzo? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, facilities we will kind of touch on because we're going to uh, chat about uh, youth service reserve. Um, I almost said reservation, renovation. Um, policy we did talk about last week, so uh, so nothing there. Uh, staff reports, Pam, did you have anything else you'd like to share? Um, I don't think so. I think my report was pretty lengthy. <laughs> um, lots of words. Um, but, uh, you know, as Lima has pointed out, we did reopen to the public. That has gone um, very smoothly, I think, by and large. Um, as I've mentioned in my report, you know, some of the concerns staff had were, um, you know, numbers of people in the building because we have a limited occupancy. And then um, also, you know, whether or not we would get pushback from patrons for wearing, uh, about wearing masks. Um, that has not really come to pass too much. We've had a couple people that we've had to either remind them to put them up over their nose or they, they forgot them when they came in and that kind of thing. But everyone seems to be really understanding about that. I mean, that should be no surprise because you've had to do this for quite some time and yeah. um, certainly that's not gonna go away. Um, but I, you know, I, you know, as Lem also mentioned, I think that most patrons were just really thrilled to be able to come into the building again and, you know, either pick up their own holds or get their own material or, you know, see their favorite librarians or, or you know, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, it was one more step towards normalcy, whatever that looks like now. Um, but I think that's gone pretty smoothly. And, and, you know, like I said, right now I'm focusing on YS renovation, the budget for 2021, which, you know, all those things to they'll make it really interesting. So, um, it's nice to, to think about more normal things, but it'd be nice also to not have this level of the pandemic that over is, you know, the <laughs> overarching everything. So, but yeah. but yeah, things have gone pretty smoothly. So I'm pretty pleased and the staff has been really, really great. And um, yeah, you know, I know everyone was really excited to get back to, to like I said, something that resembled normal a little bit more. Yeah. How are the next couple months, um, Looking, I mean, we have uh, lots of different staff with um, different schedules, kids, uh, school schedules. Um, as a parent, it's just a little bit stressful with the working parents and the school and everything. I mean, it's all just um, crazy right now. So, um, so how is the, you know, is the working home flexibility still going to be an option for those parents? What, what's the conversation like with that? Yeah, so I um, have, um, you know, obviously we're, we're paying staff for the hours they work, but I did, you know, I am, I, I want staff to work from home when they can, when it makes sense for them, when it makes sense for the schedule for their departments, um, both because it keeps them safer and keeps everyone else safer, but also, um, you know, and Courtney can probably speak to this a little bit as well, because I think that, you um, it's mainly people in her department who have um, younger children at home that this may impact. And, you know, we've been talking about what that looks like for her department and how we can accommodate those people um, that may have to, um, you know, either adjust their schedules or if they need extra technology support, you know, if they've got spouses or, you know, children that need access to their computers and things like that, in addition to themselves needing that. Um, so we're talking about what, um, you know, how we can continue to support them and certainly, um, the emergency paid sick leave uh, would apply to them as well as any emergency family and medical leave uh, would be available to them at least through the end of the year if they need to take some time off um, you know because of a child care or a school closing situation or something like that so um, we're trying to remain really flexible and i'm trying to remain as supportive of the staff as possible I and mean, that really is um, you know, it doesn't do anyone any favors to be really strict about something in, in, in our current environment. I'm not that way anyway. I mean, you know, I try to be supportive of the staff. So um, I am encouraging staff to continue to work from home when it makes sense for them. Yeah. And I don't know, Courtney, if you want to add anything about, you know, kind of concerns that we've got or that we're trying to address over the next month or so. Yeah, so... Um... There, of my staff, I would say, other than myself, um, two other staff members have probably the biggest issue with uh, kids starting school, um, trying to adapt their schedule. We've been able to adapt their schedules without a problem um, within the department. So uh, we're able to work that out 
uh, whether they're part-time or full-time, it hasn't seemed to matter. Um, and I'm just making sure, especially for the full-time person that I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, how crazy it was for me and my husband with our kids home, trying for both of us to work full-time and it gets to be really long because you're basically working the whole day. Um, so trying to make sure that she doesn't burn out doing that, um, as well and making sure that she has all the support she needs to do that. I think we're, they seem to be fine. Um, and I keep checking in with them. Uh, there's a couple staff members whose spouses are teachers. So over the summer, it has been a problem to host programs from their house. It's going to become a bigger problem with bandwidth in their home. Um, with like, the, I was talking to Pam today about that, especially um, I had the YS meeting going on Tuesday and my husband was also working from home and my daughter was on her tablet and I got kicked out of our meeting twice because we just didn't have the bandwidth. And I was like, okay, so if this is happening to me. I just don't want it to happen in the middle of a program at someone's house. So we've been kind of talking about that and ways to support the staff that way too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, th yeah, thank you for, for sharing that. And, and also, and I, um, and I think that's really important. Um, the, the mental health of everybody right now, I think. Um, so I, I'm, it, it, I like, I love hearing, hearing that Courtney. I, I just think it, it's, it's so easily overlooked just in general, but right now, especially, um, I think, uh, you know, mental health has to be a focus, um, for everyone. So, um, so, you know, uh, if there's ever something you think of Pam that, um, that you need support with, with that, you know, definitely, um, definitely let us know. And I, I do want to just say, you know, you, you mentioned this in your, in your report. Um, I hope that you and the staff remember that the patrons really overall are, just, are thrilled to just be, to have the library open. You may get a few of those, you know, um, frustration, you know, frustrated comments and that kind of thing. Um, and know that I think a lot of it is, is just the frustration with just, with just in general, you know, um, so, and, and, you know, I, I, I know it's hard sometimes those, those comments kind of can knock you down a little bit. So, um, but you guys have been doing, um, a great job and the effort is, is definitely, um, very visible. So. I, I think that, I mean, overall we have gotten, um, you know, I mean, I could probably count on one hand the, the either negative and not even really negative comments, but just, you know, people that have been unhappy with the way things are going. And like you said, I think that a lot of that is just unhappiness with the general situation, right? I mean, I was, Melissa and I were talking this afternoon and I was saying, you know, today was just one of those days that I was kind of struggling with. It's like, you know, you, there's so many things you have to think about and do and, 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 you know, there's just days that I think, oh my God, I just want it to end. And I want to put my head down on my desk and just cry, you know, that kind of thing. But, um, I, you know, but you know, the next day is fine and different things happen. Um, it's been really gratifying to have patrons come in. So when we first opened, um, we actually had people at the door, um, myself and the department managers by and large were taking turns just in case we did have people that kind of pushed back about the mask um, usage or, you know, as we were counting patrons as they were coming in the building. And um, that was really great because everyone was just so excited to come in. And I think, you know, for me, um, and I know for the staff, the, the other staff that did it as well, um, it was just really nice to have that in-person connection with people again. And, um, you know, everyone stopped to chat with us and, and that kind of thing. And everyone was, you know, really thrilled to, for that we were open again. So, um, you know, I think that, um, you know, the staff has recognized that too when they're in the building. People are just really excited to just have that, that in-person connection. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think it's something that um, we all kind of mix. That, you, you know, they, they, they say all that, that, you know, Mm -hmm. that, that dopamine release when you give someone a hug and you know all that kind of stuff and everything it's everything's different so um uh lima joanne eric do you guys have any um questions comments for pam for any of their uh reports uh i was curious how the interviewing process was going for james's replacement um you know it's gone it's been an interesting process and melissa can can speak to this too a little bit we did we actually interviewed five people and we got quite a, quite a few, quite a number of um, applications. So that was good. Um, but we interviewed five people via Zoom. Um, Melissa and I did. 
And then um, from those five, we interviewed three in person and we had, we had them come in, um, you know, had to wear masks, socially distant, um, and we had them present, um, you know, the outline of a, a program. We had some different parameters for them to do. So I think, um, you know, so I was trying to think for myself, you know, I was like in, I was likening the Zoom interviews to like, you know, doing telephone interviews, but it was interesting. One of the people that we interviewed today said, um, you know, she admitted she had been a little bit nervous during the Zoom interview because she said, I can see myself interviewing. She goes, it was just a weird thing. I mean, and you know, I've been staring at my face for months now as we have all these Zoom meetings, but you know, to have to go through that interview process was a little, was a little intimidating, I think, but um, the, the good thing about being able to do it via Zoom was we at least got to see their faces because then when we brought them in, they had to wear masks. So, you know, at least we knew somewhat what they, what they looked like. Um, but I think it, it's, it, it's gone as well as it can. Um, I, I, I think, um, you know, we, we, I think it worked out pretty well for us. We will see. Uh, I think the bigger thing for us now is, um, how that onboarding and training will go in our current environment. Um, so uh, we have two really super qualified candidates that we're deciding upon and, and um, uh, Melissa wants to sleep over and overnight. So, you know, we'll have some adjustments to make there in terms of training, I think. So that's really what we're, what we're thinking about now. What does that look like and how do we do that you know, in our current environment where we don't have the full staff here? How do you, how do you, you know, bring this person in and, and have that person, you know, feel like they're an integral part of the department and that kind of thing. So I don't know, Melissa, if you want to comment any more about that. Um, no, just to say I was happy with the process. Um, I think it was good to start with the Zoom um, just to kind of narrow it down a bit. And then it was really nice to meet them in person as well. Okay, thank you. Great, yeah. Um, so with the with the school resources that um, Brittany wrote that great um, blog post, um, I'm, I'm assuming the answer is yes. But are, are you know when you're in your meeting with a lot of the like local leadership too, are those being shared with the schools? Um, and you know it's not like um, you know the library is not you know can't be viewed as a daycare, um, can't be viewed as you know. Um, you know, you know where I'm getting at. Like, it, it can't just be like the after school kind of drop off, you know, anymore, anymore. You know, there's a little bit of that. So, um, but just curious, I mean, you know, one, like, you know, how have those resources have kind of been shared with local districts um, and how, uh, and what those meetings have been like, what, what kind of, uh, um, what kind of conversations you've been having? So I've, I've met with, you know, obviously like the village administrator, and then there's been a lot of superintendents from the various schools in the area. Um, and, you know, it, it's, they're all struggling. I mean, just, I'm sure, you know, you guys know as parents and stuff, you know, trying to, to decide what's best for the students. And um, so um, the resources we have are being shared. They're primarily being shared at a lower level. I mean, you know, I mean, the superintendents don't want me to give them, you know, here's our great new database kind of thing. So, so Brittany um, in the YS department is our school liaison, and she's been doing a lot of that, um, you know, connecting with the teachers now, and we're working um, on ways that we can make sure that the teachers and the and the students in Morton Grove have access to the resources they need. So um, we're working really hard to make sure that, you know, every kid has a library card or the teacher has a card, just so we can make sure that we are, um, you know, you know, eliminating as many barriers to access of, to our materials as possible for the students and teachers. Um, you know, I have said, I, you know, have instructed my, the staff to, to be, to err on the side of, 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 of opening more up as much as we can, you know, while we're still maintaining, you know, while we're still working within our contractual obligations and those kinds of things. But, um, you know, I want to make it as easy as possible for everyone to get a card and for everyone to use our resources and stuff. So, um, so we're, Brittany's working with the schools on that and, um, you know, we're working with Jeff on getting those cards easily available to people or at least those card numbers. And then, um, I was going to say something else and it just flew right out of my head. But, oh, I, um, you know, Courtney and I have started talking about um, 
you know, right now, uh, the youth services department is open, obviously, but we have all of the computers blocked off down there. We only have, um, we're only allowing computer access for 13 years and older upstairs in our new computer room. Um, but uh, Courtney and I have been talking about, you know, maybe uh, opening up a couple of the YS computers if those kids, if we've got kids that need to come in to utilize the computers for some reason. So we're going to be looking at that as well. Um, but I don't know, Courtney, if you want to say anything more about what the YS department is doing specifically. Um, mostly, uh, we're just listening as much as we can to the community. But to be truthful, they're not saying a lot. A lot of the, uh, for weeks, we've been like, hey, we're here if you need us. What do you need? And the answer has been silence because they honestly, I think they just don't know yet what they're going to need. Um, so we're just trying to be to, to be support as supportive as we can and let them know that we're here so that when they do figure out what they need, we can um, make that happen. Yeah, so I think, you know, kind of is from the top on down, you know, I mean, me attending those meetings with the administrators, it's keeping them and, you know, I mean, we're in the forefront now with, you know, the schools, at least from the top, but also I think, um, you know, like Courtney says, you know, just letting them know that, hey, we're here, we're willing to work with you to do what we can to, you know, make this whole process easier or, you know, more successful for people as much as we can. Um, obviously, you know, none of us know what this fall is going to look like. And and I I do not envy you guys in any way, shape or form. I can't, I'm, I'm so thankful every day that my kids are grown ups. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I mean, you know, we want to do what we can and the schools hopefully know that. And like Courtney said, I think right now, um, they're just so busy figuring it out themselves. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's totally true. I mean, it's not like, um, it's not like you can have a game plan for four months, really. I mean, it, you know, things are changing every, all, all the time. So, um, yeah. So thank you. Um, all right. Uh, Joanne, Eric, did you guys have anything, any questions? No. All right, um, unfinished business, um, youth services renovation update. Um, so Courtney and I have been meeting um, about every three weeks or so. So it's been a couple times since our last board meeting um, with uh, Tiffany and Dan. I'm just gonna say Tiffany and Dan because it's, it's less of a mouthful than product architecture plus design. Um, and they've been, uh, you know, working on um, getting more detail into the plan, you know, looking at the engineering, at the lighting and all of those kinds of things. So we're moving along with that. So the next phase or the next thing that we would need to do, um, we're at that point would be to um, hire a construction manager. Uh, obviously this is not something that, you know, a library staff person would be able to do. And, you know, the, the project would be complicated enough that, that we do need to have one. So I did include in your packets the draft of the request for qualifications and RFQ for construction manager, actually I just saw a typo, management services. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm asking the board to review this, to um, uh, let me know if, if we, uh, you know, are ready to proceed. I feel, I feel like we are, um, you know, I've been looking at the funding a lot and, um, <sighs> with everything else happening, this feels like a good time to do this. I mean, I, um, you know, I'm approaching this very conservatively, making sure that we have the money to do it. And I think we will, but I think also that um, if we can take advantage of a time that there are fewer people, people in the building, if at any time we would need to close the department, it would be less disruptive than if say, you know, we go back to normal in another year and a half. And then we said, oh, well now we're gonna close for four months because we need to do this. And then um, we also feel that it'd be a, a really positive thing for the community to be able to come back to something like that once we were able to let people in the building again, say, look at what we were able to do while, while we were, you know, had this, this horrible pandemic that we were all living through. Um, so uh, we've got the, the parts that were highlighted in yellow when I sent it to you were dates that I had talked about with um, Tiffany and um, uh, for, for dates of the project. So, um, that's kind of the timetable that we're looking at uh, with the with the project. And then the other question that the board would need to answer is um, under the selection, we have it that the board would interview the final two candidates and um, then vote on that. 
and that's totally fine. Or we, or if the board wanted, did or felt comfortable with me interviewing the candidates, we wouldn't have to call a special meeting. If if the board wants to do that, we would have to call a special meeting, um, either on September eighth or September 9th. So those are kind of that's kind of twofold. If you know the the outline of the the dates of the project, but then um, how involved the board wants to be during the process. Pam, was there a construction manager for the previous renovation? Um, no. Uh, Not like that was a bad choice? I have been involved in a couple of other construction um, projects and libraries in like the past couple libraries I've been at. And both times we've had a construction manager, mm -hmm. um, which I felt was a good thing. I, I think part of the reason that we didn't um, I can't, I can't speak to why they didn't. Um, I'm, I'm gonna guess part of it was money perhaps. And then also um, some of the personnel that were here, Kevin Justy, for example, um, was very hands-on. And I think he kind of so served he took in that role. role. Okay. Um, it has been my experience that someone that is a, a trained construction manager is probably better. <laughs> yeah, sure. Manage I was just project. curious if they did it before. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so. Um, you don't want to add it to all your list of things you've got yeah, to manage? Especially right now. I mean, maybe you know, get one more. <laughs> my father is actually a general contractor, but I don't think that was like passed down in the blood, <laughs> unfortunately. So um, I, it has been my experience that having a construction manager makes the process go much more smoothly. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. What kind of uh, salary or costs are we considering by hiring a construction manager? So I actually um, talked to Tiffany today about that. And um, so construction manager, they have uh, pre-construction services and that actually gets us up through the bid process. Excuse me. Um, and that would be about 16,000. Um, and then they usually charge uh, by month for supervision of the project. Um, and that's approximately 25 to 30,000. Um, and then there's a three to 5% fee. So the project would be probably three to four months or so, um, which is about what I was thinking. So you figure about 100,000-ish, maybe $125,000. Um, and I believe those numbers are in the budget, um, the cost breakdowns that uh, Tiffany and Dan had given us when we first started talking about the project. But I think, um, you know, while it's, uh, and a lot of that, um, that money will come, that's kind of, um, comes to at the back end of the project. So you don't have a lot of costs with construction management at the beginning. It's, it's you know, once construction actually starts and then as it finishes up like with punch lists and finishes and stuff. Okay. Well, I think, um, you know, we, when we were chatting about this, um, I don't know. It, it seems yeah, like time yesterday lost all and a million years ago at the same time. I don't know what, um, you know, I think from a logistic standpoint, um, you know, having that area closed while things are already kind of not at full service, you know, um, and, and, and one of you made that, you, you know, made that, made this comment too, but, you know, when things do start getting back to normal, I mean, hopefully it's, you know, whenever, but, you know, but let's say it's spring, um, that actually would be, Kind of cool we have this like new space that you know um and you know and, and as much as it, it, we feel like we're in this kind of standstill kind of um place right now um i also think that's that part of our role too is is to look forward to look to the future seeing what we can do seeing how we can improve um and this is and it's it's not a secret that the public would w wants this too it's it's you know so it, I, I don't think that this would be a rash decision um, moving forward. Um, so we definitely, you know, you know, Eric, you know, I would love to hear about everyone's, um, everyone's point of view to make sure everyone's, um, everyone's comfortable. No, I, I think I agree with, uh, in terms of the timeline, I should have in terms of the budget. I, I, this was actually a little question from the um, librarians report. Um, it says, you know, basically based on obviously the cost, the, redu uh, the expense reduce expense reductions from the, um, you know, uh, from the staff and uh, all those in terms of, they said you, you said there might be more put into the budget, but then is that going to, I know you said you're going to present the budget at the next meeting. Uh, is that, you know, 
in terms of asking for a budget, I know the property taxes are, won't decrease, but uh, our request since we're not going to be using, you know, obviously that significant amount of budget for this year, is it going to be asked of us to carry it over for next year or is it going to be in terms of our request? Is that going to be something that we're probably going to have to discuss at length when it comes up next month? I can answer that that quickly and certainly, you know, I mean, and we can talk a little bit more under the second part, which is the funding. And then, um, you know, and then obviously, you know, at the September board meeting, we present the budget. Um, so I've done a quick kind of my quick first run through and um, I reduced, I haven't done it yet and I won't do it probably till the September or October board meeting where I asked to um, transfer a fairly significant amount of money from the operating um, budget to the special reserves because we aren't spending it, you know, for a variety of reasons this year. Um, so just my first pass through, I anticipate that we can transfer anywhere from 50,000 to $75,000 this year into special reserves, just of, you know, funds that we're not going to spend on other things between salaries, programming, um, you know, and some other things like that, you know, other furniture, some other building expenses, that kind of thing. Um, so, um, you know, so I anticipate that probably by the end of the year, we'll have $500,000 in special reserves. And then, um, you know, the property tax I have, and then I've also started obviously on the, on the 2021 budget. And, um, you know, I focused on three things, basically. I focused on um, staff, you know, obviously we want, you know, now more than ever, the staff is what is making the library, right? I mean, we've seen that for the past four and a half months that it's the things that we've been able to pull together with the staff. So it's important that, you know, the staff are appropriately compensated. So I, my focus is where, our, you know, as I look at the budget for next year, our staff, um, the YS renovation, and then um, other building maintenance needs. Um, so those really were my three primary things. Obviously, we're going to still fund programs, we're going to fund collections, those kinds of things. But, but for the 2021 budget year, I really thought those were where we needed to, to, to um, make more of an effort that they were adequately funded so that we could do some of the things that we wanted to do. And um, the way that it's looking right now, um, I will be keeping the, the tax levy request flat. Um, you know, before this, I had, um, I had anticipated asking the board to approve a small increase like I did last year, but obviously I'm not gonna do that this year or for next year. So um, even with keeping the levy request flat and looking at reductions in some of our other revenue lines, we didn't get a lot from other revenue. Almost all of our, our all of our money comes from property taxes. Um, I I was able to put probably another four hundred to five hundred thousand towards the YS renovation and still um, adequately fund most of our other services and programs. So just with my first pass through. So. The department manager budgets are due to me on Monday. I've been talking to them obviously about their budgets for a while now, but their actual ones are due to me Monday and I'll have more information obviously in September. But um, between what we have in social reserves now, between what I think we can budget for next year, and then um, if we can get a line of credit, which is what we did with the 2014, 2015 renovation, um, I feel like we'll be in a really good place to adequately fund the YS renovation and not overextend the library. Did that answer your question, Eric? I will, uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, in terms of the renovation it did, and I mean, I know the other part of it is going to be closer to, uh, to um, just in terms of the, um, like the flat levy uh, is actually, like, I, you know, that's something basically, I guess Mick was talking about that when we actually voted for the initial approval of the uh, initial costs in it, basically, you know, with uh, expenditures during uh, obviously the current situation. So that, yeah, it, it did answer my question regarding the renovation. Um, okay, so looking at um, looking at this, the the highlighted dates, um, the first date does say August fourteenth, twenty twenty one. I just I, I don't think that was a mistake, but um, you know if uh, so that's kind of their kind of tentative timeline, um, you know, going forward. Uh -huh. So um, and then which I think looks looks good we can i mean if we can you know again having something to look forward to having the spring 2021 be that kind of fresh start i think would be um amazing um 
in terms of, you know, again, I would like to hear from um, the rest of the trustees in terms of um, uh, whether we let Pam kind of uh, make the call with the hiring of the construction manager or if two candidates are brought to us. Um, definitely like to hear your guys' um, perspective. I think that um, it's it's definitely very important that it's someone that you can communicate easily with since you're you're the one on site, you're the one um, there every day. So and the architects will also be at those so that they would be, um, you know, no matter who interviews them, if the board wants to do it, or if, if you say that it's fine for me to do it, the architects will also be assisting with that. So it won't be like me going, well, I don't know, <laughs> kind of thing. So, so there will be some more professional assistance as well. I personally would be comfortable with Pam and Tiffany and Dan doing it and making the final decision. But if the board wants us to go, well, obviously I would participate. I'd be comfortable as well, um, but I, I'd also like to offer my support if there was any um, interviewing process that you needed some help with, I'd be available to fill in. So uh, you just let us know, Pam, and, and I, I'll be there for you as needed. And because, you know, because you're the one who's going to be uh, one of the ones, I should say, the one primarily dealing with the process, you know, I have your recommendation is going to obviously but uh, it's going to be the most significant so i, I would i would be comfortable as well with it, as everyone else is saying okay um so does this rfq need an approval pam do you just kind of you're on mute you're muted that's what i thought okay sorry about that um so uh it does need to be approved and you, the motion can be that, um, that you approve the RFQ um, as amended and that um, under that selection process number two, then if what, if I can, you know, say that the, um, the library will shortlist firms for interviews and two candidates, um, I'll have to tweak that. So it says, you know, something about, you know, that the library director will be, um, making the final candidate evaluation. So if um, the board is comfortable with a, a general statement right now, and then obviously I can, you know, I'll work on getting that tweaked and send that out to you tomorrow, but um, it does need to be approved. So if you're okay with approving it with that, um, with that revision, okay, that's how I would approach that motion. And I know we kind of just did that backwards, but, um... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I know it's hard to remember to do that. I know. Um, so I'll make a motion to approve uh, the construction manager RFQ as amended. I'll second. Okay. Mumzo? Yes. Volunteer, yes. Puzo? Yes. Mesa Jack? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think you've made Courtney very happy. <laughs> you've made me very happy. Um, we're, we are, it's, it's been, I will say too, um, you know, it's nice to have something really positive to look forward to. I know for myself and for the staff and, and I, you know, and it's something that we always, that we also want to have the community have something really positive to look forward to as well. So, so that's awesome. Thank you. Um, all right, so next year, I know you touched a little bit on it, but next is, is the funding. And I know you sent us that, that kind of correspondence with you and Brian. Yeah, too, so. so the reason that I have that on here is um, the, um, you know, we're already talking with the bank because I, I, you know, I initially wanted to make sure that we could get some of that funding before I start, you know, before I relied on it. Um, and it looks like that should be no problem. But the, as part of the packet of stuff that the bank needs from us is an official, um, motion from the board that I have your permission to pursue funding from the bank. So okay. that, that's all that is. I'll make the motion. Eric, state the motion exactly. <laughs> I'll make the motion to uh, do what Pam just said. <laughs> um, a motion to uh, allow the library director to pursue funding with Fifth Third Bank. I guess. Exactly. <laughs> Got it, thank you. Okay, that was Eric. Did anyone second yet? I'll second. Thank you, Lima. 
Okay. Pelletier, yes. Puzo? Yes. Mesa Jack? Yes. Monzone? Yes. Thank you. All right, moving on to new business. Um, here, I'm going to do it right. I will make a motion to approve resolution number 2020-04, authorizing transfer of funds from the General Library Fund 10 to Special Reserve Fund 20 in the amount of $5,610.06. I'll second. Thank you. Okay, Puzo? Yes. Oh, wait, do we need to talk about that or are we good? It, this is a standard one um, sure. transferred from the petty cash to, to the special reserve. Yeah. yeah, for the overflow. Okay, back to Puzo, you said yes? Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Mesa Jack? Yes. Monzone? Yes. Pelletier, yes. Okay, great. Uh, next, I will make a motion to approve resolution number 2020-05 resolution to adopt a non-resident library fee. Second. So this is the annual resolution that um, we pass uh, in the event that there is someone uh, that is in a, a area that is not served by a library um, that they can pay a fee to join the library. That it does not happen in Morton Grove. <laughs> it's happened at other libraries they've been at and is more common because there's more unincorporated areas but that's not the case here but we do pass this so that we can um we you know that we do allow that in the event that that happens it's annual i feel like we just did this one it is annual yeah mm -hmm. and in fact, it's usually every actually it's a little bit late we usually pass it earlier in the year it's usually oh. may that we pass it okay all right mesa jack you could be thinking of sorry the um the reciprocal borrowing which is also another thing that we do so <laughs> Or that the time just jumbled together right now. Yeah, exactly. Time like has that. lost yeah. all meaning. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Monzone? Yes. Pelletier, yes. Puzo? Yes. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, next, we have communication. Thank you for sharing um, the letter from Natalia. That was really nice to read. Um, and um, I know that she's... Uh, Continue to wish her the best. She's going to enjoy her retirement. Um, and uh, a couple more that you sent us. Um, one from Mrs. Lunn, who, um, that's not her first. Uh, no. She, no, she, she's she, very sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, then one from someone who, it was interesting. Um, I, yeah, I mean, it was, it's hard. You know, I mean, we all think that we, we all hope that things were different, but yeah. Right. She's mad at the situation, not at the life. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And that's, and that's why I said that before, you know, I mean, you're, you're, you're going to have some of those and I hope that doesn't ever um, make any of the staff's heads drop. You guys are working hard. You guys are doing great. Um, and it, if you get some of that, that's more of the general frustration of, you know. Yeah. Like I said, I think that, you know, we have been, I think by and large, um, the Morton Grove community has really, um, you know, they have been supportive of us throughout this whole process. I mean, even, you know, when we were closed completely and stuff, I mean, most people that we were in contact with were really understanding about the situation and, um, you know, just appreciative of everything that we were able to do. And I know that there are other libraries in the general area that they did not have that. So we feel really lucky that, you know, everyone in Morton Grove by and large has been really, really great about the whole thing. So, um, you know, we get, we get much more positive feedback than negative. So I think the staff, and I, you know, I think I can speak for the whole staff that, um, you know, we do recognize that when people aren't happy, it's more just with the situation than with us. Yeah. Not that's not oh it's not um always easy but um but yeah and I know that it's this is just so cool like mm -hmm. yay for that's free. exactly what I was gonna say is that like, the stat page that they yes, put together? I love yeah. it so much it's so cute it's just like it it's you know so easy to digest the information yeah, it is I'm like yeah. wow what one of my things I wanted to do this year was to work on you know 
changing the way some of the graphical information is presented, at least to the board and to the public, to make it more interesting. I mean, you know, I don't mind looking at the, the Excel spreadsheet because it's kind of what I, that's what I like. But um, obviously with the pandemic, that kind of fell by the wayside. But, you know, Karina does a great job with that every month. And, and you know, we are just so, so fortunate. Um, you know, I, I tell the staff this quite frequently. I mean, I feel very honored to both be the director that you guys chose, but then also to lead such a great group of people. Um, and Morton Grove is certainly lucky to have the quality and the caliber of staff that we have here. Yeah, absolutely. So, but yeah, Karina does a great job with that. And I think she likes pulling it together. Yeah. <laughs> it was just so fun to read because I was yeah. like, wait, what is this? Oh, this was stated on yeah the she this is her third one and i think i've sent the the previous ones but if not i can i yeah. can send those to you as well but um yeah i mean they're just uh, like you said it's a fun graphical way to see hey this is how busy we are and it's it's um you know and it does it does speak to you know that we are still doing things for the public and that you know we're answering questions and people are checking things out and we're doing tons of curbside and all of those things so but you know you you also do things in a fun new kind of way like the communication with jeff you know <laughs> the that was so cute. it's just yeah. a couple of seconds but it, it made me stop and take a look and laugh yeah, yeah. You know, it's a positive way to interact with the community Love yeah. It. yeah yeah it's um yeah, like I said, the staff is just, just phenomenal and, and, you know, and, you know, everyone was super excited to be able to start doing these things for patrons again and, and you know, get people back into the building and stuff. So, but I'll be sure to pass that on to him. So, yeah, it was funny. <laughs> if, if my statistics class looked like this in college, <laughs> yeah, exactly, I would have right? been so much more into it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, um, all right. Okay. So uh, communications, we, we are, did that, public comments, non-agenda items, anything anybody um, has to share. I always love it when we get a couple of staff members tuning in just so we can tell you guys you rock and, you know, <laughs> keep up the awesome work. Hope you guys are hanging in, staying healthy, safe. We appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I will say too, um, after last month's meeting when Karina was there and a couple other people because of the resolution for Natalia um, at our next all staff meeting, um, Karina did, and I, I, I tell the board or the, the staff frequently that the board thinks very highly of them and appreciates everything that they do. But um, Karina said it was really great to hear from you guys directly, you know, I mean, and that it was really meaningful for her. And, you know, then she then passed it on to the rest of the staff. So um, they do very much appreciate the support that they get from you guys. Oh, thanks. Well, as always, um, please uh, let us know how we can continue to support you guys. We know that this is um, a, a, a mentally and emotionally draining time for everyone in different ways. So, um, you know, and and I, I know that even in the small ways, um, you know, like Lime even said, like right before the meeting started, like you got just got so happy, you got to go to the library and <laughs> check out a book, and just even things like that kind of will, will, you know, it really help people so much. So it, you know, however, we can help support you guys. Thank you. And we know that you guys are the um, the heart and soul of, of of the library. So thank you all again for all of your hard work really thank you um all right so i think that's it so i have 7 50 and the meeting is adjourned great thank you. not just the teachers and the schools but also the parents who are trying to do e-learning at home if you think of things that we can do if you hear something other parent friends are saying please do let us know uh, you know we obviously are talking to teachers um, and librarians at the schools, but really from the parents, if you do come across things that we can be doing to best better support you, do let us know. Thank you, thank you. I, I, I yeah, I know I, I appreciate that. I, I think, um, you know, we've kind of touched this and this in, in different ways, but I think, um, you know, I mean, and the best I, I can tell my kids is that um, we don't know how this is going to look in September and October and November, all we can do is kind of see how things go, adjust as we need, um, it, you know, the uncertainty of it.